Hello everyone, it's Julie from Camellia Crafts Designs. Uh, welcome to my new subscribers and welcome back to my existing ones. Right, I've got a project here today, it's for Tanya at Tatty Treasure. Uh, if you saw my last bigger project where I made the elastic binding uh, for the junk journal, uh, I did briefly show this. It was one that I made, it's just for a one, well, two signatures you can put in. I put two elastics in, but there's just one <clears throat> hole at either side and it's hidden. So you still get to see the spine of the book. I wanted to do this one like that because I just liked this book cover. It's not an old expensive book. It's I just like it. It's got a lovely green book cloth. I love the gold writing and I love the cover. The idea when I made it was to put my ideas for Edith Holden Edwardian Lady Journals in it. I made it and I've not actually used it. <laughs> so anyway, Tanya did say she wanted to see how I made this one. So I'll show you. The, the method I'm going to use could be used for a two, three. It could be used for a wider spine. Uh, I, I just think it's a good way to keep the integrity of the book. And um, Yeah, anyhow. So this is the book that I used. It's the Edwardian Lady, the story of Edith Holden. You can usually pick these up on eBay for less than a fiver delivered. If you're lucky, you might find one in your charity shop. So this is the book. I'm not even sure how old it is. But if you look, it has this lovely pattern. And the first, well, it's the end paper they call it, is in the same pattern. Someone's put a sticker on this one. In fact, I'm going to have a look, see what the copyright date is to see how old this book is. Oh, 1980. So it's, I'm saying it's not an old book, that's 40 years old, isn't it? Yeah, so it's, this one is in pretty good condition, again. There's probably people like me, they buy books and never read them. I used to do that an awful lot. Anyhow, on to what we're going to do. So, <clears throat> I'm going to gut this book, or take it apart, however, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Now, because I want to use the outside, I'm going to be very careful, and I'm not going to slice into that. No, I'm not, she says. So, first thing I'm going to do is grab my scissors. I'm not using any craft knives or anything quite so dangerous. I'm just using my Tim Holtz and I like to bend it back a little bit. I'm not too worried if I do damage the book. Let me tip it so you can see it there. Because I'm going to be covering that just a little bit of it. So I'm just going to snip down here. I want to be closer to the book block than the edge if possible. Then I'll do go up from the bottom you can probably actually see this so I find we're a craft knife I'm just I'm likely to slice into the book and I'm also likely oh look at that that pulled away nicely there yeah I'm also likely to cut myself some books you've not got the room to do it like this so you may have to get a craft knife involved I've usually given up on wanting to use book by then. So that's the first side off. It's not terribly difficult. There we go. And now I'm snipping this one off. So we'll be left with a book block and a cover. So now I'm going to go at it from this end. The reason I'm not ripping is I might rip into end papers. It would probably rip at this point, but I'd rather keep snipping. Right, so that's our cover. And this is our book block. So the next thing I want to do is take these end papers off so I can use them. Yeah, I feel confident enough ripping these. Because they're coming off pretty easily. I 
should still have enough paper for what I want to do even though we've got that sticker on yeah I should look at that that's that's so cute if you've never seen this book it has some really interesting bits in it's got a lot of original artwork of Edith's in not just from the country diary it's got original letters that she wrote now we've got a picture of her and I made a Christmas uh, yeah envelope journal recently and I used these these are actual postcards that Edith did illustrate yeah so yeah really nice book I don't know if Tanya's done a flip through of this book on her channel she does lazy Sunday videos and she flips through various books anyhow I'm with what we're doing right so I want to just neaten this up a little bit so to do that can you see I've turned it over and again I'm not using a craft knife because I'm just not safe I'm just gonna snip along if you are safe with a craft knife get your ruler and your craft knife out but do you know what I ain't Right, that's a lot neater and I'm going to do the same on this side being careful not to cut so close that I'm cutting the book cloth this is just the cloth that was used to actually bind it that you don't see I want to get rid of that bit as well I didn't like it right so that's a bit neater now if you look at the one I made I've got, you can't it's really hard to see the join because of this pattern which is good really there is a join there you might see a difference in the pattern yeah because I've then just cut a piece of the end paper and covered into the spine so we're going to do that now that one out of my way so I'm going to I'm obviously not going to use the bit with the sticker on I can use that for covering my strip of board that's going to go in the spine so it's just that basically it's the same width so it makes it really easy to line up uh, I don't think I need it to come out that far so I could save a little bit of this let me get me a little trimmer <clears throat> see how much I need I want it to come in about that far and about that and it's going to go into the middle so I'm just going to bend it there where I'm going to cut no measuring oh will this fit it'll just fit I could have done with a bigger trimmer out but it takes up so much more room so it happens that this is a four and a quarter inches but that's all going to depend on the size of the spine in your book look at that Really done already. Now, what glue do they use for this? Shall I tell you something now, honestly? I can't remember what glue I used on the last one. But what I do know is the first thing I wanted to get stuck, I did one side and then put it really into that crease, into the spine, into that crease, and then laid it onto that piece. I did it while the book was open. And I left it open while it dried. So do you know what glue I think I'm going to use? I'm going to go for... <clears throat> I'm going to go for... Kalau. Yeah, I am. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to go for Kalau. I seem to remember I used um, 3-in-1. But let's see how Kalau works. I tend to only use it for la doing things that are completely flat. So do you know what? Let's do it for this. Right, so I know where to put my glue to on that side. I'm going to grab a pencil, which is becoming difficult, increasingly difficult to find in my craft room. Let me bring this and I'm sure I've got one at the bottom. I bought a box of like 200 short wooden pencils. You know like the ones you get when you go to Ikea? So that I would never run out of a pencil. And do you know what? I've lost the box. 
this one never goes missing, isn't that weird? I don't think kids like this one. Sure. I'm just going to put a little mark there that I can rub off later to know where I want to place that. So you probably can't even see that, but I can. And I'm going to start by putting my glue straight to the paper. Again, not too worried if anything squidges out of the edge on this because. It balls up and comes off just like, yeah, just like, yeah, three in one off fabric tack wood. And I'm putting quite a bit on because I want it to squidge and get a decent coverage. You do get a little bit more wiggle time with this it takes slightly longer to dry than three in one and fabric tack so I'm liking it for this because it allows me to put the glue on the whole of the paper now let's put that up to my little mark where's the can't see mark there it is <clears throat> right I'm gonna have to tilt this to see if I've got it lined up I have Looks lined up everywhere. What's the top looking like? Smidging out, so it needs to go up a little bit. And I'm going to press that down and then I'm going to press into this crease. I'm going to get my bone folder with my lovely round edge on and I'm just going to press that in gently. Carefully, don't tear it. But this is quite a sturdy paper, this end paper. Then I'm going to do the same with that side rather than one forceful movement, lots of small ones just to get it in. Can you see how that's pulling that back slightly as I get it tucked into this crease? I'm beginning to wonder if three and what if Kalal was the right way to go because I want it to stick quite quickly at this side. And I'm going to come in and use my bone folder like that, I think. Yeah, that came in handy, didn't it? Or maybe if I did this in two halves, I don't know. See, it seems to be working. find this the easiest way to do a book spine. If I were going to sew through this like a traditional junk journal I would put some of the Tyvek underneath this paper to strengthen it but because of the way I'm binding it I don't think that's necessary. We've got the lovely book cloth on the outside. Right, I'm quite happy with that. Stayed nice and straight. You can hardly see the joins. If I fold it, you can just see. Yeah. I'll show you the edge and that edge. So our book from the outside on a bookshelf would look, just checking it's not bubbled up there, it would just look like the Edith Elden book, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, that's lovely, that. So I'm going to keep an eye on that, keep making sure it's flat while I move on to the next part. And the next thing I want, bring the original back in for a second, we need to cut a piece of chipboard or you can do it by layering up card. Yeah, whatever thickness your card is. This, I couldn't tell you in millimetres, it's perhaps about four millimetres thick in the end. Yeah, and I wrap that piece of card in some more of this paper. So I'm just going to pause because I'm not organised enough to have brought my chipboard with me. Two ticks. And I'm back. Right, I'm here with my rotary trimmer that I use for chipboard. 
and I was hoping that I did have a piece of chipboard the right width but these are not quite wide enough so I've got lots of these strips you know so I used to make um, mini albums and I used chipboard for most of the covers so let's have a look now I can cheat <laughs> and I can have a look at the width of that one to decide how wide this spine needs to be this this book seems slight is it slightly bigger I don't know so let's measure this bearing in mind it is wrapped in paper so that's gonna add to the width slightly so that one measures that's just over an inch so I'm thinking perhaps an inch yeah there's no I don't have a magic way to decide how wide to do it what I do first is I cut my chipboard down slightly wider than I think I need and if I need to just take any off, I take some more off. So if we close it up, there probably is a method. Yeah. Mm. So that, that part of the book's, mm, yeah, an inch. If you measure it, it looks bigger than an inch, doesn't it? I suppose if you made it too, well, if you'd made it too big, the book wouldn't close up. So an inch seems nice and snug but not too snug so let's cut an inch off this chipboard all right see how wide this is this way it's three inches so i know if i line it up to the two inch mark here because the only drawback to this trimmer of mine is the smallest mark you can actually see really is that two inch so that's actually perfect happy accident that one were so I'm going to hold that and I'm going to come in and use my 25 year old trimmer. Other trimmers have tried to take its place but no one has succeeded. <laughs> right, let's see how this is. Oh, that's the uh, made book. So let's put that in. Then once that's laid in the spine, I'm going to try and close the book. Oh, that looks fine. We're going to have room to wrap that with paper. So the next thing I want to do is get the length. I don't want it to be, if you look at that one, I've just made it the same length as the end paper, yet yeah, rather than the length of the book. I think it looks nicer and neater. So I can get that length by measuring that end paper, can't I? So, where's that pencil gone? I want kids don't want to nick. Now I'm going to measure it just a smidgen, like not even a sixteenth of an inch shorter than that. Just to allow for the paper, I'm going to wrap around the ends to make that look neat. So, pop that in my little trimmer. There we go. So that's my piece I'm going to use for my spine. So I'll get rid of all these other pieces, just so I don't use the wrong one. Because, <laughs> yeah, I'm full of tricks like that. Oh, you don't need to be there. So, what I did then is I just basically covered this. But before I wrapped the paper around it, I did put some wrap some paper over the ends. Do you know it looks like I'm going to get away with using, not using too much of the paper. Now that's going to be enough for just wrapping some around the ends. So I know it wants to be just under an inch wide so I'm going to use this chipboard again so I've got I want a bigger mat that's in inches my big mat here is in centimeters but I use inches an awful lot more than I use centimeters where's my big chompy scissors where's they gone oh, I'm a nightmare losing stuff oh, grab these they're not my Tim Holtzers, but they're good I'm just going to come in and cut that. I'm not going out way long because I can, I can use that for something else. Right. I just basically want two pieces of paper to go over that end like so. Yeah, I'm going to use my Cosmic Shimmer for this. I'll put the glue onto the paper. So 
that's like that. This is just so we don't have the exposed chipboard at that end. Just making it all look nice and neat. That's my other piece. You might you could have a full bookshelf full of fake books, couldn't you, doing this? <laughs> I can imagine that. I'll build up a huge library of these books. And then in 50 years' time, when I'm no longer on this planet, someone comes to browse my library and they're like, whoa, and find all these goodies inside that I've put in instead of the original books. Yeah, because people are just going to come from all over to browse my library, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a bit... <laughs> right. For this one, I'm going to put the glue on there. And I'm going to use my Cosmic Shimmer again. It sticks a bit quicker than my What's It. Yeah. Am I on camera? My What's It, yeah. Yeah. I can't find words today. It's another one of them. Why am I doing a video days if I can't speak? Let's get plenty on. I think I need to fill this up. It's getting a little bit empty. Put a little bit more at the ends. And I'm just going to lay that down onto a piece of paper. This is probably a little bit wider than I need actually. And I'm going to wrap it round. I'm just bending like that, like when I wrap the edges of the last book. I don't know, it just seems to do it nicely. So much more nicely. And there we have that. You know what? I'm going to come in and cut that curled up edge off because it just might cause problems with this all laying flat. Do you know what? I'm going to cut a bit of that off as well. We don't need it doubled up on the back. It might just make it a little bit thicker than it needs to be. I'm guessing I did this on the last one. I don't know. It's about a year since I made it. In fact, I think I made it New Year last year. Right, then I will come in and put my glue on here. I'm just going to put a bit in that crease just to make sure it sticks to the end of the chipboard and it's less likely to unpeel. There we go. And let's fold those back over. <laughs> just go on, you can do it, woman. Fold those back over. Now this is kind of job where my trusty bulldog clip comes in under just to hold it and it's I wish I had two I don't I have some other little clips but only one big chompy bulldog clip what's that all about I'm, I'm also you see what I'm doing here on the back bit use these smaller scissors woman I'm just gonna cut that off it's just going to make it look a bit neater. Yeah, just at a slight angle. There we go. And that one. Yeah, I want more bulldog clips. So, you know, I'm going to clip it in the middle. Clip it in the middle. Oh, do you know what? I'm not even going to do that. I'm going to put it flat and put it under something. I'm going to put it under my mat, put it under this mat at this side while I get the bits out to do the next part. So, <clears throat> let's get some elastic. Oh, it's already out on my desk. So I'm going to use this elastic. I've, I've read this box now. It says this elastic is two millimetres, but do you know what? It's not. No way is that two millimetres, is it? Let's measure it. It's more like three. 
I won't go any thicker than that. I know Tanya were asking me about widths of elastic. The white one I've got, I don't know how thick it is. But you need that double. This black one is okay to do single. So I'm going to measure enough off. So one, two, and enough to tie. I don't want to be struggling to tie, so I've cut a fair chunk off. Put you back away in your box. All this time, this piece is drying. Let's get some eyelets out. I think I'm going to use these dull gold ones again. I like them. My favourite eyelets of the moment. Not those. I've got some others here. They've got a very short. I don't know if that's called a shank. So they wouldn't do. I want these with the longer shank. Yes. A couple of those out. I'm using my handheld crocodile because we don't need to go too deep into things. And this all seems to have dried up nicely. Yeah, really happy with that. Right, let's get this out. Because we use the Cosmic Shimmer and it grabs more instantly, that's glued lovely. So that is going to go in there. Can you see? It's nice and snug. But you can still close the book. Love it. So we're now going to put our holes in the centre. I'm going to eyeball this, she says. <laughs> right. We want it to... Oh, use the big hole. I'm using, if you've got one of these, it's the 3 sixteenths of an inch. I'm going to use this as well. I'm going to set it for starters to a quarter of an inch. And I think a quarter of an inch is going to be fine. I don't know what I did that one at. Looks like about a quarter. Not too near the bottom or it, there'll be no... It just won't be strong enough to hold. But I'm going to eyeball that that's in centre. I think that's the centre, so voila. Because I'm not having to look through the centre hole to line it up, I've not bothered clearing it. That looks like the centre. Yeah, so I've had that set on a half an inch and that looks good to me. Grab my eyelets because I really do think they just finish it off nicely. And let's set those eyelets. One eyelet. Might tighten that up a little bit. Two. There we go. So that's going to go in there. Lovely. So let's thread our elastic through. Now the reason I like to have my elastic knotted on the outside is because, yeah, we aren't going on about baggy elastic <laughs> again. It does. Elastic will definitely stretch over time. So if we put the knot at the back, you're not going to be able to tighten it up, are you? Did I get enough here? Have I yet got enough? I've only got enough to put the elastic through once, Anna. Silly woman. Silly woman. Get some more elastic. That's going to be used for something else now. Yeah, by putting two elastics in, we can put two books in. You could fit more in, but I don't want to put more in. You can try three if you want. It would work, I suppose. Tie outside. Start there. Back in there, through there again, yeah, I, I wouldn't want to do three. Can you even see what I'm doing? I've got it up under my own nostrils. That's better. Yeah, so didn't measure that right before, did I? So, yeah, I'm going to cut that off again. It's a big roll of elastic. I'm not likely to run out sometime soon. Twang. You just feel that it's tight but not too tight. I know that's like... That's like you asking me how long a piece of string is and me saying, well, it's however long you cut it. But 
That is true. Let's knock that again. So, yeah. It's not tight enough to bow your board, but it's taut to it. So that then, you know what's coming now. You just glue it on, don't you? It's not rocket science, is it? <laughs> oh, rocket science. So, that gets glued on there. Now, when I glued it, to make sure we could tighten this elastic, I didn't put glue on the elastic itself. I just put glue on those edges. I'm now beginning to think, I may have built that up a bit. I may have... No, I used 3-in-1 because it's a thicker glue. It's like a gel and that will allow it to set is that my three and one that's empty nearly yeah that's my bottle that needs thinning so where's my one with more in oh here it is hiding yeah so sometimes it's not about remembering what glue to use it's because i've got my, my memory's shocking i'm always going on about how shocking it is it's about thinking what you want your item to do how what, quick do i want it to dry for, for my ease now to make my life easy and how, how long do i want it to hold for <laughs> my answer to that one is normally as long as possible i'm trying to stick that wrong way now aren't i all right so I'm going to come in and put my three in one. I'm just going to make sure this is not crisscrossed. We don't want it crisscrossed because it'll be too bulky. That's better. Oh, I've really got to invest in some more three in one. Because I'm nearly out of it now. I think you ladies in countries where you, the temperature change is more noticeable in the new UK will be able to tell me does this get thicker in cold weather because this is so thick I'm beginning to wonder if this weren't my empty bottle but it's not it's the one with the most in and it's just not happening is it it's really not happening I don't know if the end's still clogged the glue trials again Get your big chompy pin woman and give it a poke. That could be an issue. Oh, yeah, yeah, it were clogged. So I'm going to put a very generous line of three and one up each side. Oh, I find this really hard to squeeze. I think it's getting empty. This is hard work, this. This is like a workout at gym. Oh no, perhaps. Yeah, there you go. Squeeze it with two hands, woman. That's better. And I'm just going to look for any bits I've missed. You know, like it can just miss sometimes. Right, there we go. And I'm going to pop it in my spine. Now I'm not going to go squishing down like mad straight away because I don't want it all oozing out. Do you know, I'm just beginning to remember now, Kalal do a glue gel in a tube. Yes, they do. And I'm going to get some. I used it years ago when making cards. Kalal, and it was called Kalal do glue gel. And you'd use that for like now you want things to be either slightly raised up. Move that book from underneath it. Oh, you want things to be pretty 3D. Yeah, we used to use it for decoupage. You know the kind of decoupage where you've got the same picture like 10 times and you built it up from the base, which was the full picture. I'm just holding this because it does grab a lot quicker than the Kalal I'm using at the moment. Oh. Go, go, go. 
Yeah, I'm going to have to hold it. Yeah, Kalal glue gel in a tube. I'm going to look that up as soon as I get off. If, if I weren't filming on my phone, I'd look it up now. I'm itching to look that up. So that might fill the gap for me that is still left by switching from the 3-in-1 to the Kalal. Because to me, the cost savings are huge. Depending on, even if you buy the Kalal from Amazon, which is twice as expensive as some other places, it's still half the price of 3-in-1. There is a site, I can't remember the name of it offhand, they will sell you a litre of Kalal and I think with postage it's something like £15 and that's for a litre. And at the moment I'm buying the 250ml bottles of Kalal off Amazon and they're 5 99 And that, that's basic. I'll show you the bottle while we wait for this to dry. That's the size for five ninety nine, And that's just, that's more expensive than I need pay. But that's just because, you know, I'm not going anywhere else to get it. And that's twice the size of the three in one. And it's usually about £10 for two of those. So you can see it's half the price of that. Yeah, I'm having a Yorkshire bird ramble about saving money. <laughs> like that so you just need to give this a little bit of time to glue up properly it's looking good me likes it yeah so anyway tanya you wanted to know how that were done and that is how that's done so, do you know something? I've used thicker elastic there, aren't I? What on earth is this elastic? Where did I get it from? Maybe that was just a little bit of adding moustache. Mm, so I'm guessing that's two millimetre elastic, Tanya. It's thicker than my white and thinner than that one that I measured to be three. Who knew? So, thank you very much for watching. I'm just going to keep holding this. You really don't need this video to go on while I hold a piece of board down till it glues. It's, I think it's, we've done enough holding now. Look, it's all nice and straight. If any glue oozes out, we'll wipe it off. And there we have it. A hidden elastic spine. So, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Thank you. Bye.